Rick, there are four little letters that, for some reason or another, are, streak, are uh, striking FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, into a great segment of the GA community, ADSB. What is it? What does it do? There's confusion about in, out, forward, backward, inside out, whatever the case may be. Let's, if we, if we can, let's simply define what ADSB is and isn't. Well, you have automatic dependent surveillance broadcast. It's a broadcast system that broadcasts the aircraft's position in space based on a position source such as a wash unit and provides an altitude source. So it's basically, from an air traffic management perspective, it's a radar-esque image that's generated from the aircraft instead of from the ping off of a radar. Works out pretty simple. What we have is, is we really have two different ADSB outs and one ADSB in. And the ADSB outs are to supplement the radar picture that happens right now. And ultimately some some port down the road will just replace radar altogether. But right now it's to supplement it. And theoretically it's to make the air traffic management system more efficient, more effective, hopefully saving the FAA some money so it's kind of our investment in the air traffic infrastructure. But you have two ADSB outs. You have UAT and you have 1090 extended squitter. Each of those has a purpose. If your flight operations are such that you fly in Class A airspace or you fly internationally, then you probably want a 1090 extended squitter. If you're running uh, a turbine aircraft, you're going to be in that environment anyway. If you're just a local operator going for a $100 hamburger, you're probably going to go with a UAT because it's a little more cost effective. Those systems are, are pretty straightforward. Basically, think mode S transponder if you would. ADSBN is really where general aviation makes its money because that's where we get the information and the data into the cockpit. We get weather, we get traffic. These are the things that, that the government's pumping back up to the airplane. It's taking the data that's sent out, reformatting it, and sending it back up to the airplane so the, air, the pilot can make better decisions, better pilot information. Freedom through performance. At Cirrus, performance is not simply the measurement of a single design parameter. Rather, it's a total package. It's optimum balance of speed, efficiency, comfort, safety, ease of flight, and quality. We call it Cirrus Flying 2.0. Aren't you ready to feel the freedom? How is this going to truly affect GA in the future? How is this going to uh, affect those of us going from A to B, or for that matter, where is the confusion? Where do you see the greatest disconnect between the reality of what's coming and what people think is coming? I think for the vast majority of GA operators, if you just look at what the regulation requires, which is ADSB out right now, I don't think you're going to see any difference. You're going to put a box in your airplane, and honestly, it's not going to give you any more functionality. It's not going to give you any more capability. It's just an investment in the efficiency of the air traffic control system. If you are a high-end user going into the dozen or so real high-density airports, you may see some requirements to use that airspace to have it, so access to certain airports may require ADSB, and you'll see a little bit of benefit there. And finally, what's the future? Well, I mean, we know where we are right now from a standpoint of it's a, it's a burgeoning technology that is slowly working its way in, uh, into you know, our, our GA fleet, but how is it going to deploy? Well, that's a real challenge. The FAA is looking at managing the performance of ADSB, and because of that, it requires a lot of certification and validation. We're in the very early stages right now. Because of that, we're probably the better part of two or three years before we really start deploying viable ADSB out uh, technologies, and those are the ones that are going to be really hard to go with. We're getting more technology for in. 
for instance, a lot of the operators are starting to have ADSB in for airport operations, for runway incursion, things like that. There's some software programs out there that are really going to help with that. I think that's where we're going to see some real benefit because it's going to track ground vehicles, it's going to track landing aircraft, it's going to track taxiing aircraft. And so I think we'll have the ability to minimize airport hazards, which will be the real benefit, I think, for, for most of us, because I think that's where we see more hazards than in the air. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. With additional questions, what are good resources for people to get educated on both the current realities as well as the future of ADSB? Well, I would hope that AEA is, is certainly one of those resources. We were looking for an intro. Yeah, you know yeah. We certainly publish it in uh, the Pilot's Guide to Avionics along with Avionics News. It's also on the website. Yes. <laughs> and, just uh, so happens. Just so happens. Get your guy here. And, uh, but we also have it on the website, which is AEA.net. Beyond that, uh, the FAA has some really good web pages that describes the ADSB infrastructure. Now, it's too deep. There's a lot of technical stuff there. Uh, and, and the end result is, is that uh, people are more than welcome to, to ask questions and I'll answer with whatever information I have that's current as we go. We're learning more about this literally every day. Keep in mind the FAA's flight plan. It is for next gen. Next generation is not just ADSB. It's communication, it's navigation, and it's surveillance, CNS. And we will be seeing over the next 15 to 20 years a wholesale change, not a progressive growth, but a wholesale change in what we understand to be communication equipment, navigation equipment, and surveillance equipment. Outstanding. Thank you very much.